though we turn our attention now to Houston, to Texas, as they were dealing with a deadly derecho over the weekend as seven people lost their lives tragically with a lot of rain and most notably winds of upwards of 100 miles an hour. I do want to put up this tweet right now from Centerpoint Energy. They're saying as crews continue their restoration work, they're encountering areas of significant damage such as equipment buried under multiple downed trees, large limbs, heavy debris and fences, as well as entire large trees down. And of course, Centerpoint Energy, the main service provider in that area at the peak. Some 922,000 customers were without electricity as of Sunday night. Centerpoint says 75 who experienced outages have had their power restored. We're hearing from different officials on the ground there after this major storm rolled through the area. This some images coming in from our Fox 26 team, just a four box of some of the images of the restoration work, some of the power outages, and also some of the damage to buildings in downtown Houston. Let's listen in right now to the mayor from earlier on, including emergency management, discussing the cleanup efforts there underway currently. Northwest Spring Branch, going through the heights. I know the heights will have a block left out of not being re-energized. It's because of your transformer or some technology that once they turned on the community's re-energization, there's still a specific problem for that resident. So realize, we know who you are. They want to complete their mission. They hope to have it mostly substantially, is their word, substantially by sometime Wednesday. A lot of work left to do. Please be safe. I can't emphasize enough, cut out unnecessary driving, particularly at night. Avoid the downtown exclusive exclusive areas, the six blocks. I want everyone to know we are doing everything we can. We feel your pain. We're experiencing your pain. I spent all morning with these families lined up. One family told me they had walked 40 minutes here from Hammerley and Long Point to get here. They were disappointed that we didn't have the resources, but we've taken care of that. We gave them a ride back. And I've always thought I had too much security, but that's another story. One of my security persons took them home. That's why we run for office. That's why we're all called public servants, whether you're ever on a ballot or not. I'm lined up and surrounded by public servants, each one of you, whether you're ever on a ballot or not. We're doing what we're supposed to do. We're in a life safety mode, but now we're also emphasizing humanitarian needs. Let's get these folks roofs back on their house. FEMA, FEMA's here this afternoon. We will have a mobile unit here in the morning to interview these folks, let them apply for federal assistance. So I don't know what I've left out, but all I can say is it's all hands on deck, all hands on deck and then more hands. So let me yield to one of the finest public servants, dedicated public servants who got us to this location. This is a self-contained community. And they don't reach out to us, we've got to reach out to them. And that's what's being accomplished as I talk. Commissioner Briones, thank you for thank your you public man. service. Thank you. And if you'll help thank my you. friends with a translation, <laughs> sí, claro I'll, even, sí. I'll say claro something que... else tonight about you. Claro que sí. Good afternoon. Welcome to the city of Houston. Welcome to Harris County Precinct 4. Welcome to Councilmember Amy Peck's district. We are here again this afternoon. This morning, many of you were here. We saw the lines of people. We learned that there is 900 children under the age of five who live within three quarters of a mile here. There are apartment complexes everywhere. This is a severely under-resourced area. When we have temperatures going over 100 degrees with the heat index, we know that we must take action. There are numerous cooling sites across the city and the county, numerous distribution centers. This is one that shows government in action and the power of partnerships. This morning, we were able to harness the power of the community of different levels of government. And we're back this afternoon with the federal government. Thank you to the FEMA representatives here. Thank you to the Texas Department of Emergency Management leadership that is here, the county and the city with local nonprofits. And now we are showing up with even more resources because of your voices. So thank you. 
all there's so many partners to thank but i just want to let you know that right now we have thanks to the texas department of emergency management deploying the fema resources that the biden administration has sent to us here at this location, we have 22 pallets of water, 22 pallets of ice, and 22 pallets of MREs, and we've asked for the same again tomorrow here. Please go to the City of Houston and Harris County websites to see the different sites. I also want to encourage you, FEMA, call FEMA, go to FEMA's website, get an app. The registration is quick. You may qualify for $750 of immediate assistance. We will do our part to press to make it as easy and efficient as possible. Lastly, we're picking up debris that's in the works. Again, Harris County's working within the city of Houston to get it done. Precinct 4, we have about 150 crew members working here in East Spring Branch, Lazy Brook, Timber Grove, and beyond. We're also working with the city this evening. We've heard from you about the mosquito problem that has just been exacerbated. We are having Precinct 4 trucks along with city trucks that will be spraying starting this evening. We will not stop until we get it done. We know that there's still approximately 200,000 people waiting for power. We have amazing leadership at Center Point, including who also happens to be the Metro chairperson, Elizabeth Gonzalez Brock. They're working around the clock. The government's working around the clock. And here in Harris County, we collaborate. So thank you. Muy brevemente en español, estamos aquí de nuevo en el Condado Jerez Precinct 4, la ciudad de Houston, en el Pitner, aquí en el Boys and Girls Club. Esto es el poder de las alianzas, el poder... All right, you're just listening in there as they're going to the Spanish portion of this press conference there in Houston with the mayor as well as other emergency management crews on hand. They're talking about the power restoration after some of these very deadly and dangerous storms in that region. I do want to put up this tweet one more time from Centerpoint Energy talking about the crews working to restore some of this power. They're encountering areas of significant damaged, such as equipment buried under multiple downed trees, large limbs, heavy debris and fences, as well as entire large trees down. And of course, it's been four days since that major storm with winds over 100 miles an hour damaged many parts of Houston. They were talking about large trees being down. And of course, we're going to be joined right now by Fox's Joy Addis. And you can see one of those trees in the background as power companies working to restore power in the city. Rising temperatures also a concern, making it very dangerous. Joy Addison, right here on Live Now from Fox, I appreciate your time. What are we learning about how quickly they're restoring the power and just how powerful were those storms several days ago? Well, Andy, the storms did not last long, but the damage here is extensive. We know that crews are out working, but so many people here in, in Houston, we're the fourth largest city in the country, and there are lots of people without power. I'm going to step aside so that you can see uh, this damage here behind me. A very large tree is still in this person's yard and all over the city of Houston. You'll see damage just like this. Crews are trying to get to it, but it does take some time. Now we're also dealing with scorching temperatures temperatures and tens of thousands of people here in the city still don't have power. The mayor of Houston says uh, around 200,000 people are without power and over the weekend temperatures were in the 90s causing a higher than normal number of heat related 911 calls. Centerpoint Energy has nearly 7,000 workers in impacted areas but still 56 schools remain without power. that's going to be if, if maybe we need to make plans to, to actually leave the area for a while. The massive power outage has caused several other safety concerns. The mayor says 15 people have been arrested for burglary. Also, one person has died from carbon monoxide after using a generator in their home. People here are asked to avoid driving around town unless necessary because a large number of traffic lights are out, causing accidents, and a large portion of the downtown area is blocked off to protect people from pounds of glass on the street after windows in high-rise buildings shattered from those high winds. We were not giving planned notice for this storm, but it's a severe storm. Downtown Houston, we have an exclusive area that you cannot go to work in. City employees should not go to work unless they're a central tier one category that's going to help us with our public safety. We were 
And Centerpoint Energy says their goal is to have uh, power restored for the entire Houston area by Wednesday. The city of Houston says anyone that needs to be transported to a cooling center can have that done for free as we see our temperature, uh, or excuse me, our heat index here reach triple digits. Andy? All right, thank you so much. And the images coming in are certainly very dramatic. Some of those trees, very large in nature. And of course, you are based in that area covering kind of that region for us here on Fox. What was it like? Kind of give us an understanding because I, you probably covered hurricanes as well. Can you kind of contrast some of those uh, kind of feelings and memories? Yeah, Andy, working in southeast Texas, I've covered several hurricanes, but the difference is with those type of storms, you have a warning. With this one, we had no warning. There was maybe four to five minutes in between the time that we got the notification to take cover and by the time that those high winds started. Um, the duration of the storm, I would say about 10 to 15 minutes, but it's going to take a while for power to be restored. I don't think people realize when you don't have power, you can't take a shower, you can't cook, you can't heat anything up, you can't use a microwave. So it's really hard. We really can't live in these houses um, also because of the heat. A lot of people have had to leave and go to areas where they can stay cool because of how hot the heat index is. So it, it just has been really difficult. All right, yeah, and some of those cooling centers opening as well. And we do see the tree there behind you, and they talked about how it's hard to pass through some of these streets and neighborhoods. Can you kind of give me a sense of how difficult it is to get around as all these emergency crews, these center point energy are trying to get the power lines up, but it's hard to just get to the, some of these locations. Can you kind of describe just maybe how it's like on the roads? Sure, so the night of the storm, I'd say the area that I live in is about 12 to 15 minutes from downtown on a normal day. In order for me to get to downtown Houston, it took me about 45 minutes because of how many streets were blocked off due to trees. A lot of these trees have been moved to the side of the road, but it's still, the roads are still not completely open. There are also power crews, it seems like, on every other street, so you're having to do a lot of maneuvering. Uh, definitely, if you're in Houston, give your time, give yourself some extra time for traffic. Traveling, um, because work is still being done to hopefully get power restored and get things back to normal here shortly. Yeah, almost a million people there without power at its peak, and that is slowly uh, going down as we follow it. All right, Joy, thank you again. We appreciate your time. We're glad you stayed safe during that storm, and thank you again for joining us here. Thank you, Andy. We'll keep you updated. All right, thank you so much. All right, we're going to continue on here on Live Now from Fox. I am Andy Mack, and of course, I do want to put up just this live picture as Centerpoint online providing an update on just exactly how many power people are still without power. Customers affected there, 180,000, while restored in the last 24 hours, a quarter of a million people there. So certainly a lot impacted. We'll have much more on this coming up in two minutes. All right, welcome back in here to Live and Out from Fox. I am Andy Mack, and at the peak, nearly one million people in the Houston-Harris County area were without power due to that deadly derecho just several days ago. We're continuing to follow the recovery efforts in that region. I do want to put up just some of these images right here on Live Now from Fox. As uh, so many people just excited to get their power back on, including our Fox 26 sports director, Will Kunkel there, finally got power. You just see the excitement for him and of course hopefully for everyone else they'll be sharing the same joy as within the last 24 hours some 274,000 people have had their customers have their electricity restored. We do want to be joined right now as we continue our coverage with the severe weather in that Houston region talking about some 180,000 people still without power uh, Center Point Energy, a major service provider there. We're going to be joined by Communications Director Alicia Oshodi. Thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox, talking about what Center Point is doing as well. And you can hear some of those numbers, 180,000 people still without power, but at its peak it was a, a million, nearly a million. What is Center Point doing and maybe how quickly should people expect their power to come back on? Hi, thanks for having me. Yes, uh, at the peak right after those storms came through Thursday evening, we had about 920,000 customers out. So we have made some tremendous progress over the last few days restoring. We're down to around 180,000 left and, and we're hoping, we're, we're feeling pretty confident that we can be substantially complete with those restorations by Wednesday evening. So crews are out, they're, they're working tirelessly, but also as safely as possible to restore. 
we I do want to mention we just are so appreciative for the call, the answer to the call for mutual assistance that we had immediately following the storms. We requested nearly 4,000 additional line workers, a, another 1,000 vegetation management professionals to join us in our efforts. So in total, when you add up the center, center point energy employees and contractors, we have more than 7,000 resources currently working our system, trying to get power back to those who are still without. Yeah, as quickly as possible. I know people need to be a little bit patient because it's not gonna come back necessarily immediately. Hopefully it is as well. And we're talking about homes, schools, businesses. Can you talk about maybe just the type of place that was impacted by this? And, and are we prioritizing certain things like schools or businesses necessarily over certain neighborhoods? So when it comes to our restoration process, um, we're really prioritizing bringing as many customers on at a time that we can. So from that aspect, from restoration, trying to get the largest amount of customers on uh, as fast as fast as we can. But then, as you mentioned, um, you know, critical facilities are also a priority. And, and so what we've actually been able to do is mobilize some mobile generation units to help bring back on some of those hospitals, uh, some schools, uh, even a senior living center, because we know that those are critical facilities. And we know that it's hot. We, you know, we, we recognize customers' uh, frustration with still being without air conditioning when our temperatures are where they are. And, and so I can just say that we appreciate their patience uh, as we're in day four of restoration, but crews are working as quickly as they can while also taking care of themselves. So taking those breaks when they need to, need to and then getting right back, whether it's up on the pole or to carry another transformer right on up there to try and restore as quickly as they can. Yeah, sometimes that's the best advice is they don't want people to go out there with chainsaws in this high heat index and create another crisis for emergency management as well. And we see some of those images there of the glass, the power lines down, the trees down. Can you describe some of the biggest challenges for Centerpoint when they're trying to restore so much power to so many people? So with this storm, uh, just significant damage, and a lot of that was around vegetation. So that's part of what is taking just, you know, a, a lot of time to get through is the fact that before we have our line workers who can actually go in and start the repairs, there is just a, an incredible amount of vegetation that is sitting on our lines and, and on our equipment. I was out at some sites today and, and just, you know, we had heavy rainfalls, which softened the soil. And so we're not talking about just some trees or limbs, we're talking about entire trees and roots that have come up out of the ground and have landed on our wires, taken down poles. Unfortunately, we've seen them on customers' homes. And so that is really what is taking a significant amount of time is just getting the area safe, everything cleared, and then the line workers able to get in there and really make those repairs and get folks restored. But they're making, they're making steady progress and they've done some great work so far. Yeah, progress is key as well. Uh, of course, they're talking about cooling centers, generators. Are there any tips for people, customers, or otherwise about some of these restoration process and maybe what people, what do you want people to know most about this process? You mentioned cooling centers, so definitely as, as folks are understandably uncomfortable in that heat, please pay attention to information going out locally about cooling centers, um, stay hydrated. Also, just from a safety perspective, stay out of um, you know the areas where you see us trying to work as folks are getting that work done. We want our customers to be safe. We also want our employees to be safe as well. Uh, and I would just say, I, again, we, we thank our customers. We've seen and heard from a lot of folks who are very appreciative of our crews as they're, as they're out there getting the job done. And we just thank them. We're almost, we're, we're gonna be there soon. So we, we appreciate everybody's support. Yeah, I do wanna have one more question for you because you kind of see the term nested outages sometimes on social media. And you might be confused when you get a notification that your power is back, but the lights just won't go on. Can you kind of give me an understanding of what that means? Sure. So we have heard from some customers. They say, you know, I, I see folks around me on and I'm not on. One of those things, uh, one of those factors could be nested outages. So that's when the main issue of that circuit has been resolved, but there's a smaller, more contained issue that might be affecting a few customers as part of that circuit. So we say, you know, that there's other issues that might be affecting you. Something else I want to spotlight is that um, if you are, are if you have the weather head, so if there's customer owned equipment on your structure, that could also be a factor where we 
fixed and repaired the line, but there is customer owned equipment that also needs to be repaired by the customer before you are able to receive our service. So there's just a couple factors that could be influencing why the customer uh, might see those come on around them and they're not on. Uh, and we can, of course, come out and help resolve those issues as well. All right, good information there, Alicia. Thank you again for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. I know a lot of people appreciate your hard work there at Centerpoint as well, restoring nearly a million people who were without power several days ago. Thanks again for your time here on Live Now from Fox. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. I do want to put up just this tweet right here on Live Now from Fox as well from uh, the Houston Metro. Thank you to everyone who has been working nonstop to restore electricity across Houston. That includes crews at Centerpoint and mutual assistance crews from across the country. Metro is proud to assist those workers providing critical transportation. It was some 7,000 people, potentially the workforce there to restore power. All right, I'm Andy Mack. Story we're still following here on Live Now from Fox. We'll be right back.